The road which Bussy has traveled since her childhood in Soweto is a story she dedicates to family and young entrepreneurs. The early chapters written on these very streets. <laughs> but I mean, look at this. This is where I grew up. This is where my fondest childhood memories reside. This is my parents' home, where I was raised with lots of love. You know, when, when you say to people I was brought up in a four-roomed house, they think you mean a four bedroomed home and um, you know there's four of us including myself as siblings so the four of us shared one bedroom and my parents shared the other bedroom and so this is an extended version um, when my parents made a little bit of money over the years when they started their construction business uh, we've got the big window we've got the stop nonsense we've got a two room and a garage at the back there's my uncle hi malume hi, so Fez, this is my mama's kitchen. Now this is where I learned my entrepreneurial skills. This is where we used to stand in line and make sandwiches, where my mother would butter the bread, uh, my elder sister would put in the filling, and we would cling wrap and put it in our boxes. So this is where it all happened. And then these sandwiches would go and sell at soccer stadiums. This is where my business school is. This is where it started at the age of six, yeah? I see the two plate stove that my <laughs> sister, Auslerato, won when she entered Miss King Kong. And it's still here. Pageantry was clearly something in the family. Pageantry was a way that my mom thought would be wise to keep us off the streets. Johanna entered Miss South Africa in 1992 and she won Miss Personality. I entered my first pageant at the age of 13. It was a shoe shop pageant, Miss Helio. So yeah, pageants were big, not only just in our family, but in our community in Soweto. And even being prepped for the pageant was quite a thing. I mean, my mom used to <laughs> warm up from a stove and she had this hot iron uh, comb that she used to straighten my hair with. Oh my gosh, it was the most painful thing ever. And that's why I've become a rebel now. I've decided I'm gonna grow my afro. I'm done with burning my skull. The shop she visited as a child is still in business. Come first and don't tell Baba. That's all. Same place, How was Basi when she was a young girl? Clearly, she came here often. Yes, yeah, she used to come and play. She was a wonderful girl. Oh, she asked me the paper. Wanted to read the paper. She wanted especially to you know look fashion. Fashionista from a young age. I had it in me, honey. You know what? I wore these shoes today. My dad has serious swag. My dad was the sharpest, finest dresser, yes. dresser in the hood. Yeah. These brogues today, they came out for my papa, baby. Like Listen, so I used to cross the street um, selling the sandwiches and boiled eggs up and down the street. And here, this corner is where our construction site was. Zamzam Construction was birthed from here. Um, I mean, my mom was the first black woman bricklayer. My mom was a teacher by profession. She had an eight to five, but my mom was a hustler, a true entrepreneur. And you can still see my family name on the wall. Um, some of the bricks have come off, but you can still see the Makalimele. It's amazing that it's still here. Their legacy lives on. What that enterprising spirit bought was a new house in Protea North. Okay. Oh, wow, the upgrade. <laughs> this is the burbs, babe. You know, in 1987, I mean, um, it was around the state of the emergency and moving into a suburb like this was a really big deal. And specifically, the feature of this home is this long passage where we were basically using this passage to learn our walks. Our mum would put a book on our heads and then you'd be able to have to just walk and learn your poise and your deportment, your turns. This was my 10,000 hour grounding. Let me show you my Okay. Moves, bye -bye. I mean, I will die. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you haven't missed a beat. Come on now. <laughs> Let me tell you about this mirror. It has such a special place in my heart. My dad put this mirror here and he used to say to us, baby girl, before you step out into the world, look at yourself in the mirror and you can be whatever you want to be. Building their dream house took Basitsana and Romeo Kumalo two years. 
And this is home. This is a place we call home. Welcome. Let's go and cook. Yeah. Famously private about her family, Bussy made an exception for top billing. Meet my tribe. This is hashtag the tribe. <laughs> this is Ungo Snati, Ushaga, and Vuntle Bamura, and my mini me. Oh. So one of the things we love no to hats. do here, <laughs> yeah, no hats. Please tell him. Oh, yes. Manners, um, house. Thank you, Fizz. Thank you so much. Thank you. I always <laughs> tend to forget. <laughs> <laughs> we are making almond and chocolate cupcakes, mm. which are vegan friendly and gluten free. It's like you know me. First, I know that six pack Baba has to be looked after. All right, so all our dry ingredients are in. Nutty boy, come and help mommy to put in the wet ingredients. Mm. We've got the maestro some, himself. Yeah, it's some vanilla essence. <laughs> I'm gonna put in banana. Nutty, what are some of the lessons that you've learned from your mother? You know, some of the most valuable lessons my mom's taught me is that don't follow the crowd, even if you have to stand alone, and never give up. So, the stricter, mom or dad? Dad. Dad. <laughs> so you know your mom and your dad are quite famous, right? Yes. yes. Do you know what that means? It means they go on TV. <laughs> Oh, I just said you can taste. taste. That's the taste. Yeah, that's ah, the taste. Marwen. <laughs> Ooh, guys, the cupcake's almost ready. Go and play outside, okay? I'm just making a really simple dinner to celebrate the book launch with my tribe. Of so course. I'm just gonna make a quick butternut soup, and that's just not so difficult, hey? I love that you celebrate with your tribe. It's almost like you just want the people who've helped you through this with you. My tribe is my life, and I just first sleep before the mayhem and the whirlwind of, you know, the beautiful public that has embraced the book, just to have a quiet dinner at home with my family, because it's a collective journey of all of us, Baba Alaikai, Baba Kumalo, and, and the kids. So tonight is just about the K family. <laughs> When somebody finally closes your book and they've finished it, what's that take-home message that you want them to kind of feel and just marinate about? You know, I've been through a lot in 45 years. Um, and the title of my book, My Journey of Hope, is really a book of hope. I've had major losses in my life with the passing of both my parents, losing my twins in 2007 at 20 weeks. There's a lot of pain that I opened myself to be vulnerable and to accept so I could process it and heal and transcend. And, uh, you know, even through, you know, when I had the miscarriages, um, I went through a, a serious um, depression. Um, and so I want somebody when they pick up the book and they read my true story in my own voice, in my authentic self, in my being, they can be able to pick up the book and say, wow, if my son has gone through this and she's come to the other side, I too can. I'm sure everybody's going to devour those words like you're going to devour this meal. Oh, I can <laughs> smell the fish. Fez, would you be a gentleman? Of course. Always thank am. you. Thank you okay. very much. Manific! I have a oh, second nice. career as a chef, you know. Another job. <laughs> She's going to do another. <laughs> Mrs. Kumalo is also a business partner with her husband. But family lunch was no time to talk shop. Your book talks about your journey, and Romeo, you've been able to witness it firsthand. I mean, how has she changed from the woman you knew even before the 19 years of marriage to who she is today? When we started dating, she was 23 years of age. So I think the last kind of 25 years have been extraordinary for her. I've seen her grow, and I've watched her develop into this extraordinary businesswoman, into this amazing mother to our children. And just uh, to into this um, woman who's confident about her place in the world. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I love about my husband, when I physically, is that he's a present father. The way he's raising not only just his sons uh, to be just decent members of humanity, even his daughter um, to find her own voice, to be courageous. And I just, I just love watching him with them. And I think that's what makes me fall in love with him every single day when I see what an amazing human being he is, but what an amazing dad he is as well. She talks very much about her tribe, and all of you guys form that tribe in the book. But what is it that you read in that book that you kind of were surprised about or didn't know about it? Uh, I kept on reading as she was writing. I mean, she's had an extraordinary life. You know, fame comes with its own privileges but it also comes with its own downsides. I, I was surprised that she poured out so much of herself into the book 
because there were a couple of things that I read and I thought, okay, I, w I wouldn't go that far. But I think she was so dedicated to the project and, and she wanted it to be authentic. And it's her story, so she, you know, she went ahead and published it. At a packed launch, the biggest names in media shared how their careers were inspired by Bussy being the first Miss SA to have a full-time job, presenting, then co-producing top billing. Johanna Mukoki is especially proud. As much as it is her book, it's also your story that she touches on. What does this book mean to you? I think it's wonderful that Bussy could be able to give a, a legacy like this, not only for young black South Africans out there who obviously want to be able to get inspired coming from uh, Dusty Roos, but I think a beautiful gift for her children because I think as parents we need to tell our stories more. Bussy could have easily won Miss South Africa and just led a charmed life, but she's so engaged in communities and in the well-being of other people, and that's what makes her unique. You know, we can all succeed for ourselves, but when you want everyone to succeed with you, that's when you know that you've made it. You actually met Ubasi when you were about 19 years old, if How I'm not mistaken. I do my research. Yes, I did meet her pregnant and 19 years old. I was a pregnant teen when I met her, and she did not judge me, she embraced me, she loved me, she more than anything like adopted me, she took me in as one of the few ladies that she chose to mentor and she completely changed the trajectory of my psychology and my life, yeah. We wish her success, especially in sharing her story now with the whole world. Did you ever imagine that your story would inspire and bring so many people together? My journey of hope now I know for a fact has ignited hope in so many other people who have read the book and who are still going to get to read the book. So it's just, it's just too overwhelming. It's, it's been an incredible, incredible evening and thank you, Lord. Guys, what do you think of Mom's book? Good. <laughs> I think that pretty much sums up this entire night. There's been nothing but magic and from me and I'm sure everybody at home, Thank you for everything you've done for us. Thank you.